Well, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for hanging in. I know it's been a while since I posted a video and that's because I've been busy with a really complicated stair job. It's an open riser staircase with a top winder uh, made of uh, solid birch. A lot of it came from uh, live edge stuff that was two and a half inches thick that I milled down into the treads and the winder treads. I'm going to show you how I made a paper template and then made the winder templates and made the treads and winders uh, from that template. But the whole template process is key to a successful job. Had I not done this properly, it wouldn't have worked out. I don't think there's any videos on uh, YouTube right now that uh, speak to how to do a winder staircase with open uh, risers, with no risers. Uh, I want to thank uh, Gary Thompson and also Carl Rogers for fantastic videos they have on YouTube that uh, help me a lot in this uh, process. In any case, you know, enjoy the video. Enough talking. Well, this job started with a trip to Canyon Country Cedar, uh, owned by a friend of mine, Paul Buckley, near Thunder Bay. And he is just a pro at cutting up these slabs and drying them out properly. Uh, these slabs have been sitting for about five years. Right, so I've made an exact diagram of the winder stair portion of the staircase. Uh, stringer being here, another one over there. Uh, the staircase coming up from the main floor here, but there's a post that the uh, stairs will turn on right in this area. I've used the protractor from the uh, Capex saw just to find my uh, 30 degrees. So I'm going to draw 30 degree, uh, three 30 degree wedges uh, or winders uh, for the stairs and then extend them, extend the lines. And that's what I'll use for building my winder treads. All right, so that over there will be a long wall, stringer against a long wall. This will be the top straight tread up from the main floor. This will be the ninth tread. All the basic treads are 11 inch tread and a 10 inch overall run. So there is a nosing of one inch. Then I'm gonna have my one two three winder treads you can see how they're going to come out from the post structural post and then there'll be a tenth uh, top uh, regular tread uh, before you step onto the second floor so the reason i'm going through this exercise is so that i make my winder treads big enough and i'll make them a little bit large because I'm going to assemble them on site and I'm going to have to do some trimming depending on how things go, uh, how straight and square the walls are and so on. So I've mapped out my stringer here uh, going along the long wall uh, that will uh, later on up ahead will, will support the winder. But at this point here, um, I've just drawn my uh, stairs. I've, I've drawn a line here. This is a B. This represents a 2x12. This represents a 2x14. There is a possibility that I may put a 2x14 against the wall and then a second uh, stringer that'll be two by 12 and it'll be cut out with the uh, saw pattern, I guess you'd call it, to support the treads. The customer does want double uh, stringer, so that is a given. 
Now I just continue this uh, run of stairs, which is just very ba basic, right up until it transitions into the winders here. Now at this point here, this is my ninth 10 inch run will be 11 inch uh, tread. That'll be the final just ordinary 2 by 11 tread at this point. There's a structural post here uh, which will be on the open side of the stairs and then the material I have for stringers is 126 inches long which will get me to this point here. So there's lots uh, of material for me to get uh, past the post on the open side and on the wall side I can make a splice right into where the winders start which is interesting because that's when I have to change the direction of the stringer anyway. So from here on this is where the winders start. There's the first winder. Here's the second winder and right at this point here is a 90 degree turn where the walls turn 90 degrees. There's the second portion of the middle winder, which is like a diamond shape. And then there's the third winder up here. And the top straight tread. Top of the stairs will be over here at this point. Now, <clears throat> you can see that uh, it was vital to draw out that little a diagram of a bird's eye view of the winder so that I know the dimensions of these pieces. So basically this will be a template. I'll just have to coordinate where I'm going to trim the stringer on, on the bottom so that I have appropriate headroom going across uh, the uh, stairwell underneath going to the basement. Once uh, one live edge had been removed, I could just run them along the fence through the table saw and get them down to uh, a rough width. Wherever possible, I tried to maximize the width of the uh, rough tread because I knew there was a few places where I would have to cut the hardwood out. These uh, birch slabs uh, range from two and three eighths to two and a half inches thick. 
but I had to get them down to a consistent size. And so once I removed both the crown and the cup, you know, did one side and then the other, I was left with treads that were about two and an eighth inches thick. There were two uh, slabs that definitely had some heartwood that I had to remove. It was just too cracked and fragile looking. So I just simply cut them out and laminated the tread after. And it turned out almost un unnoticeable. So I've got a uh, little curl up at the end of this stair tread and I can't just cut that off because I need the length. But I see that it starts right about there. So I'll just see if I can take some of that off with my uh, five and a half, make it straight. All right, so that worked really well. I'm not gonna plane it anymore. There's a bit of a, a dip right in here, but I'll at least be able to run it through the thickness planer. Now, I've got all my material inside the shop here to make the winder treads, and also the uh, stringers that are gonna take the winder treads. In this, uh, in this situation, this is a renovation. So I've got approval from the building inspector to turn the stairs off one point. Uh, normally, um, if you're a stair builder, you'll know that they have to gradually uh, go around the post so that there is um, about six inches on each winder. But we can't do that in this case uh, because of, we'd have to rebuild the whole stairwell. 
Uh, anyway, um, what I've done is the back of the winder tread on all three winder treads is going to come off the back side of the post. That way I'm going to have bearing here to, to support that uh, tread. I can't have a winder tread on an open staircase with just a little point being supported because it's not going to work without risers. So uh, confusing as that may be, you'll see how it looks uh, once I have them uh, assembled. And, and the key here is that whatever you're doing, uh, make sure you it's going to be approved ahead of time before you start building. All right, so I placed my winder template on top of a piece of cardboard. And then with uh, thumbtacks, I've just marked the perimeter of the winder tread. And then I'll <clears throat> remove the paper and uh, the pin holes will serve as a way to trace and make up a cardboard uh, template just so I know how big to make my winder treads. All right, so that matches my drawing and we'll cut it out and see if it uh, works. Uh, at least I'll know how big to make my uh, winder tread. I have a visual, kind of a visual learner. And every now and then I surprise myself with my intelligence. <laughs> Normally pretty hard on myself. Just a friendly reminder to like and subscribe. Help grow the channel. Thank you. All right, I'll just show you. I've got two pieces of 14 inch birch uh, side by each. And these templates uh, illustrate just how these uh, are gonna go together. I'm gonna keep a long, a solid, long grade edge on the front of each winder. And the lamination will be towards the back. You can maybe just see the outline of that winder there. I'm going to use a 10 by 100 domino to laminate that at the back and a third one over there. Uh, then uh, a second winder will again have long green continuous uh, on the front edge. Those arrows uh, mean the front edge. And I'm going to have some dominoes uh, here and here. And the third winder could have potentially come right here, but this crack sort of uh, throws a wrench into that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this piece over here. That will be winder number A, as you can see. And then this piece of waste here will work uh, for this little spot here.
All right, so we're gonna get ready to make this splice between the two uh, stringers. Uh, what we did is uh, we cut this at a one degree angle on each uh, where they meet. So we're gonna have a nice tight joint. We're gonna use the domino connectors, XL connectors. We take a 14 millimeter bit. I have a video on my channel on how to use these connectors. So I'm not gonna go through all the minutia on how to set this up, but basically, we're going to use two dominoes with a connector in the middle. It's one of the features I like a lot with this uh, Bluetooth uh, activated mini vacuum as I can. Just hit a button anytime I need and jack your stuff up. Well, the final step was to round over all the edges on these treads and winders and then wrap them up uh, for transport to the job. This is my new helper, Sean. And, uh, you know, we'd really appreciate if you'd like the video, uh, share with friends and other woodworkers, and subscribe if you haven't. There we go. That's pretty good. Now we won't wipe that glue, we'll just put it in there and sand it. All right, so this uh, illustrates the uh, beauty of doing that template on brown paper back at the shop. And you can see here, hopefully, how uh, it's almost exact. All right, so I'm using the same technique I did to make the templates for the winders. Just using the actual paper template and then using a pencil to mark the cardboard through the template and then we'll cut this out and just test to see if it's going to work uh, for the uh, stringer. I can mute that out. Not a problem. And then I'll just take this like this well, we'll see if that puppy works. Right. Pretty slick. All right, so uh, Sean is uh, holding the first winder template up in the corner here. Uh, that's gonna be the first uh, winder after the straight run of stairs. I can't tell you how great this whole template system has been and, and making that drawing on brown paper was super beneficial. Now, the only thing that's different, Sean's gonna continue putting these little winder templates up. The only thing that's different is that this, Stringer here, we ended up going with a two and a quarter inch stringer instead of an inch and three quarter. So basically we've had to remove about three quarters of an inch off one side of each template. And that's because in order to be square, I had to be about a quarter inch uh, off this wall as well. So there's my three quarters of an inch. So they're fitting really nice. 
we've made some notes on how we can uh, tweak them before we cut into the actual two inch tread. So I just wanted to show you that and let you know that this would be really the only way to build a set of stairs like this with the open stringer and do it in a way that you can assemble it without too many headaches. Yeah.